Our ultimate goal with this uh, treatment of symmetry is going to be to create linear combinations of atomic orbitals that produce molecular orbitals that reflect the symmetry group of the molecule. And so that's where we're headed with all of this. Uh, but what I want to do here is to basically demonstrate how one can take a given reducible representation and decompose it into its component irreducible representations. So our starting point is to consider that we have a reducible representation, which I'll denote by this capital gamma, that is some linear superpositions of reducible, irreducible representations, which I label with these indices i. All right, so it's just a linear combination, and it's these constants c, and, and they do represent constants, that we're interested in finding so that we can represent a given reducible representation in terms of its irreducible components. Now, I'll note that when we have this true, that it must be true for each of the various symmetry operations that we have that the character for the reduced, uh, for the reducible, uh, ir uh, the reducible representation can be written like this. All right, where these are the characters of the various irreducible representations. All right, so if we have this, then we must have this for each R. All right, so what I want to do is figure out how we go from this statement here to determining what these various coefficients C must be. And I'm going to follow a, a certain path to do that, and I'm going to lay out the steps so that you can see what those steps are, and then we'll see what they mean in each case. Okay, the first step in doing this is we multiply, and when I refer to equations, I'm going to be referring, say, to this equation. We're going to multiply this by the character for the kth irreducible representation. And you'll see in a moment why this is, uh, you know, why it's important to choose this. All right, I'm not going to specify k yet. It's not necessarily equal to i, uh, although it's going to be equal to one of the i's in this summation. Uh, and it's going, basically going to be used, if you will, to project out a piece of this reducible representation. All right, so what does that effect have? So I'm going to multiply by k chi sub k of r times the reducible representation for that symmetry operation. And then it's going to be equal to k r times this sum. All right, well, since I have this times a sum, I can bring this in and multiplying each term of the sum. So in effect, this is going to be the sum c sub i chi sub k of r, chi sub i of r. All right, the second step that I'm going to take is going to be to sum over all the symmetry operations. Okay, the symmetry operations here are denoted by the letter r. So I'm going to be doing a sum over r. So what does that look like? All right, so now I'm going to sum over r of this product, and this is again the reducible representation, and that's going to be equal to the sum over r, sum over i, c sub i, chi a, chi k of r, chi i of r. All right, now this summation, it doesn't matter which order I do this summation in, I'm just, I'm summing over discrete points, if you will. So I can reverse the order of this summation and in fact write this as sum over i c sub i and then sum over r chi k of r chi i of r. And the reason I've done this is that because irreducible representations are orthogonal to one another, if k does not equal to i, this is going to vanish. So here again, we're seeing the uh, benefits of orthogonality. All right, so there's, this is going to be proportional to delta sub ki, which is 0. If k doesn't equal i, it's equal to 1. If k does equal to i. But we know that if that k equals i, 
this sum is going to be equal to the order of the point group or the order of the, the that's indicated in the character table. How do I know this? Well, let's suppose that uh, the symmetry operation here happened to be the identity operation. Well, I'd have all ones. The number of symmetry operations is equal to the order of the group. And if I have all ones and I have R of them, then it's going to be, this is, I guess, another way of saying the total here is up to H. It's going to be H. And that's going to be true for each of the rows, each of the irreducible representations. All right, so I know what my result is going to be here. But this part is important because it's forcing this sum to focus on one uh, element only. And that is that uh, the, the, the one element that's going to be pulled out of this sum is the element when k is equal to i. So when we use orthogonality, of the irreducible reps, then k is equal to i, and we will have as our result here that the sum over r chi k of r chi reducible of r is going to pull just one term out of this sum. That's going to be the sum where i is equal to k, so it pulls out c sub k and it pulls out h because we get the h from down here. And that's the only thing that survives on the right hand side. Well I can now solve this to find that c sub k is equal to 1 over the order of the group times the sum over the symmetry operations of this product of characters. Alright, you'll notice that the particular number that I'm getting is the one that I use to project out from this uh, reducible representation. So this is a great prescription for exactly finding what my coefficients will be when I write my reducible representation as an expansion in the irreducible representations. Now it's one thing to go through all this theoretically. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to reproduce a proof, um, but I want you to see how this gets applied in a real uh, particular case. All right, so I'm going to show an example here that's related to the C2H point group. And this particular example is going to involve a reducible representation that has the following characters. It has 3 for the first character. It has negative 1 for the character uh, related to C2. It has 1 for the character related to the inversion operation, and negative 3 for the character related to uh, sigma sub h. So this is E, C2, I, and sigma h. And I'm going to rewrite these over here just so we have them for reference. All right. So what does this uh, decomposition involve? Well, if I want to find, for example, the AG component of this reducible representation, what I would do is effectively take the sum over the R's of sigma a, uh, chi AG for each R times chi reducible for each R, and I would divide it by the order of the group. The order of the group is 4. So AG is going to have as a multiplier 1 fourth times the following. I'm going to multiply this number times this number. That gives me 3. This number times this number gives me minus 1. This number times this number gives me plus 1. And this number times this give, number gives me minus 3. So I end up with 0. So 0 is the coefficient that I would have for this particular irreducible representation. And I can do this for each of the irreducible representations. And I want to do that just to illustrate how this works out. All right, so for BG, I'll have 1 fourth of 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3, or 1 fourth of 8, which is equal to 2. For a sub u, I'll have 1 fourth of 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, 
minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, and minus 1 times minus 3 is plus 3. So here I'll get 4 over 4, or 1. For BU, I'll get 1 fourth of 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1, minus 1 times min 1 is minus 1, and minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. So this will give me 0. So the only two irreducible representations that contribute to this reducible representation are these two. So in other words, I can now write uh, conclusively that my reducible representation is equal to 2 of my BG representation and 1 of my AU representation. And we usually write this as follows, 2 BG plus AU. So this would be the result of my decomposition of this reducible representation. I hope that's made sense because uh, we'll be going through this a, a little bit more in a couple of other cases in uh, the last video.